Hey guys, Brian here from Free Salon Education here, and I've got my lovely model, Christina. She, uh, she came in today, and I'm really excited because she actually is mostly virgin hair. It's really long, it's a great texture, and all she's got is highlights from last year. So she was a perfect, perfect candidate for me to go in, do a really great balayage. We talked about wanting to keep it natural, but still giving it a really nice pop, and really get a nice blonde in there that's just gonna make it head-turning blonde. So I'm really excited. We're gonna go through today, do some really great hand painting. I'm gonna be working with cream lights because I wanted to make sure I used something that was nice and gentle on her hair because while I wanna give her a really great pop, I wanna make sure that I don't trash the quality of the hair either. So uh, here we go. All right, so to get started, as you can see, I've got her sectioned off just back to front and we're going in with the cream lights here. The key to making sure that you get a nice seamless balayage, uh, the start, your first key actually, I guess I should say, is gonna be that you wanna make sure that you're using a lightener that's got the strength to lift, but the consistency to glide over the hair. Uh, some of you may or may not know, balayage is actually French for sweeping. So keeping that word in mind as you're working can help to make sure that you're, you're gliding over the hair with a good sweeping motion. So Cream Lights is really good for that because I know that it's going to give me the lift that I want and it's going to brighten her up, but it's just going to glide through the hair as I'm brushing on those nice wide sections. Make sure as you're working that you elevate that hair straight out from the head. I've got her parted from hairline to hairline with a little bit of a semi-triangle shape to her hair so that as I lift that up, it's flat on top so that as I am applying that to the section, it's going to go on nice and smooth. But then when I let go, it's going to have that hair from underneath sort of make the section buckle a little bit like you saw just there so that it's not going to press too hard against the hair underneath and it's not going to cause any weird bleed marks. I wanted her hair to have a nice seamless transition from her natural into the lightened ends. So as you can see, I'm doing triangle sections that are really just framing the outside because what that's going to do at the end is that's going to work out through all the hair and just really give it no harsh lines of demarcation and just that nice seamless gradation that I'm looking for. Uh, the saran wrap that I'm using in between is actually a really cool perforated saran wrap that uh, I got from the Sunlights Company. They make a whole bunch of balayage tools and different things that uh, just help make our job that much easier. The paddle is also from them as well. Just holds on to my product for me, making sure that uh, I can work cleanly and quickly. So we've got the back of her head done. As you move into the front, I always want to make sure that it not only looks good when her hair is down, but it's also going to work when she pulls her hair up. So that's why I always make sure that the hair around the face, that hairline, I paint that a little bit closer than I might throughout the rest because if she throws her hair into a ponytail, I also want her to enjoy her highlights, enjoy that balayage. So we're working that down. I make sure that I don't just have those two lines that I'm creating framing the section just ram together. I want them to come together on their own, sort of through a, a, a forced perspective kind of technique when applying it. That's why I'm holding the hair down further towards the ends of the section because I want this painted line and the painted line on the back side of this section to just seamlessly come together. And when they collide at my fingertips is where it's going to be blonde through the ends. Matt goes in and does a really great cut to, uh, to work with these nice long layers. That's why I made sure that I, I had the line come together a little higher up than I think I was planning on just because I knew that some of these ends were going to get cut off. As you get up towards the top of the head, you want to make sure that you're still getting a good elevation. I had her tilt her head back just a tiny little bit so that I wasn't pressing any of the hair underneath. Working on the section framing technique like I'm doing with the, uh, the application of the cream lights is also going to make sure that I'm giving her more of a highlighted effect rather than just an all over blonding. 
obviously, if you wanted to use balayage to create something that looked a little bit more like she was just entirely blonde, you could do that as well. But this is just going to make sure that, you know, she's got a nice grow out. We work with her natural to have it become a part of the color itself, her, uh, her nice gradation color story. What's cool with balayage is as you look through this saran wrap, you can kind of see where your highlights are going to live. So if there's any areas that you feel are looking a little too dark, then you can go in and always, of course, add more. Working into my last section here, the small side of the part. Just making sure that it's quick sweeping motions. I started at the mid shaft of the hair, sweep down and work up towards the scalp rather than starting at the scalp because sometimes there might be a little too much product on your brush or you know you just haven't gotten your rhythm yet and then before you know it you got a big blonde blob right by their face so what's good is if you apply it to the mid shaft then you can smooth it out moving downwards and smooth it out moving upwards which will also make your highlight you know get a little bit finer so that you don't have to have large streaks near the face if that's not the look you're going for as I get close to the part, I tend to work in slightly smaller sections because that is the hair that should have the most dimension because in a sun lightened effect, that's the hair that sees the sun the most. So it makes sense. Making sure we get those ends nice and saturated. I like to always make sure that there's two good hard highlights right at the part on the face line. It just adds a really cool look to it to make sure that she always sees and enjoys her balayage herself. Get one last piece of that saran wrap to make sure everything stays nice and protected. And there you go. Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com. I'm here with our model, Christina, who Brian just colored uh, using the cream lights. So I'm really excited to uh, not cut too much of this off because we want to see all the highlights that he did. So what we're going to do is keep the hair long, but what I want to do is add a, a nice kind of face frame feel to Christina's hair. She has a really low density of hair. So what I want to do is keep the fullness. So I'm not going to do a lot of elevating throughout the haircut. We're going to use a razor, the Donald Scott carving comb. Uh, it's going to make the haircut really quick. We're actually going to work off of three basic sections throughout the hair. So we started off right at the high point or the, the mid part of the crown and we section diagonal forward down to the ear uh, on both sides so you can see that. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut my basic line in the back. I'm going to use a, a heavier stroke with the carving comb. So I'm going to comb this hair down. You can see how long it is. And really the focus uh, of the haircut is going to be the face frame. So if you guys look at right here how long this is. She's got one piece that I think used to be part of a bang. And then the rest is just really long and hanging. So what we want to do is bring some life into that. And how we're going to do it, um, you can see how long this is and how it shortens her face up a bit. So and to be able to kind of elongate her face, we're going to add that layer and movement right around this area. And that will kind of shrink the gap in between her, the length of her hair and uh, where the chin line starts, I guess. <laughs> um, so we're going to start in the back. Uh, you can see this hair has been on her head for a really long time. So we're going to remove just about a good two inches off of the base. That'll make a nice strong base for her. Uh, and we'll leave that highlighting because you can see where uh, the gradation starts right around here and gets lightest at this point. So I just want to remove just a couple inches with the carving comb. Uh, the carving comb makes it really simple. So as we tilt it down, I'm going to take a nice vertical section just combing everything very consistent in the back. And we're going to work one length at this point. So uh, even though we're going to do a layering haircut, because I've taken that section at mid-crown forward, all of these layers are going to fall, or some of these layers are going to fall over top of this haircut. So we're still going to have um, that, that, uh, that movement in there, even though we're cutting one length in the back. All right, so once we get, uh, I want to see that couple inches there, and I'm just going to go through. I like to use the carving comb as like a, a kind of like I'm drawing with a pencil. So we're going to work 
from one side to the other, keeping that tension. This will give us a nice soft uh, broken line. You can also go straight in with the carving comb if you want as well, uh, whatever is most comfortable for you in this part of the haircut. So I find my guideline there and I'm going to work and just cut some of that length. So nothing real exciting here. We're just doing a, a quick trim. Uh, the excitement's going to happen right in the front. That hair is jumping off of her head. It's wanted to leave her head for a while. So it's very excited at this point. Same thing, combing the hair down, keeping my body straight with the head. My shoulders parallel to the section. And that's cleaning up the back. So we don't have to do much more in the back. We could do a little bit dry if we feel like we want to break it up a bit. But for the most part, you won't have to. She's got that lower density of hair. So. All right. So now, Christina likes to work off of a center part. So, and that's how we're going to do the blow dry and the finish on this haircut. So we're going to cut it with a center part. If she liked it uh, more on the left side or right side, then we would just part it there. Do the same exact steps for the haircut. Um, and we're going to work in a forward uh, angle. So I'm going to take now diagonal back sections. I can take a little bit thicker sections because um, Christina has that lower density of hair. So we're basically going to do this in two, two passes. So we've got our first one, which is going to be our guideline. So I'm going to turn her there. We're going to comb the hair forward. Keeping the elevation low, if I go too high, I remove too much weight. Uh, I want to keep it nice and heavy around the face, but just create that nice face frame feel. See, falls nice. And we're going to take our second panel out, which is the rest of that whole section. Uh, if they have a higher density of hair, thicker hair, I would elevate more and I would do less hair in my hands, but because I combed it out, I can see my guide under there, and I'm just gonna work. I'm sliding my hand out as I carve through. You can see we're keeping all of that length in there. We're gonna do one more pass, just to tie in the bottom. Now we have a full face frame, nice long hair. All right, so moving on to the opposite side. The only thing that we're gonna change about this technique is we always wanna uh, be moving our tool in the same direction. So even if I was cutting with scissors, I would wanna cut from the top to the bottom, just like we did on the opposite side. So I'm gonna work the hair out, and then I'm gonna start working the carving comb from the top to the bottom. another three inches, three inch section, diagonal back, and all that hair forward. And the last bit. Now, if I see a little bit extra length on the corner, then I'll just pull the rest of the hair over and keep going until that length is gone. You never know, each side of the haircut might be a slight bit different uh, based on her previous cutting or non-cutting for a long time. All right, then I'm just gonna work around, check the back. And 
a lot of people are always asking, how do you create that V sectioning with the haircut? Well, that's how you do it. Pull everything forward, you cut it, and when it falls back, it goes short to long that way. Longest in the center. We did our trim, and now it's, she's gonna have a beautiful layered haircut to go with her uh, highlighted hair. So, hope you guys enjoyed this technique. We're gonna blow it dry, and then we'll sum it up all at the end. Thanks for watching, guys. Here it is, we're all done. Matt just finished her haircut. As you can see, we gave a nice little, just a face frame to lighten up her hair a little bit so that we get a little bit of movement around the face. And we went in, did lots and lots of balayage. This is, this is the final result of everything. We'll spin her around. After we processed it till we got it to a nice light level that I was happy with, we went in with the Ricardo Demi 10A, just so that I could get just a little bit of overall that very nice, pale, cool, hug to the color that I just wanted to make sure just made everything even more seamless. So we gave her a fun little style just to really show off all that nice layer and texture that Matt put in there. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much. Go check us out at freesaloneducation.com. Thanks.